Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. We got BG. You're going to hear from Brad Garlinghouse, ladies and gentlemen. We got Gary Gensler's twin brother talking about the Phoenix rising. We're going to hear that. Oh, my goodness. You're going to want it. By the way, Bitcoin nuclear powered in the United States, XRP ledger amendment, Australia, Spain, Norway, Bank of America, SWIFT, cutting out retail investors. We're going to readdress that. And we got this for you, too. What about a firm? confirmation on XRP price and fair market value versus market value. I'm going to show you what you don't know and you need to know. Somebody wrote that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Boy, do we got a show for you today. TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content. Right now, we're flat in the market at $1.08 trillion. Bitcoin, 22,800 plus, up 9.5% on the seven-day. Ethereum, 1,600 plus, 45 on the seven-day. Tether market cap is 68.8. And we see right here, XRP is 42 cents, ladies and gentlemen. 42. Let me just take a note of that really quickly here. 42 one four and we are up 9.6 percent on the seven day now that is something to pay attention to and so is this ladies and gentlemen link to portfolio company polysign products are making the world of digital assets more attractive institutional investors and in accelerating the transition from traditional finance to decentralized finance yeah 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 click the link underneath this video if you want to get some of that private equity i'm telling you it doesn't last long ladies and gentlemen and you got to click the link you got to be accredited if you're not find out what you need to do to get accredited and here's more poli sign news germany's token to spy stake in the u.s blockchain enabled fintech company things are happening quickly ladies and gentlemen yeah if you don't know arthur brito and david schwartz co-creators of the xrp ledger also at polysign click that link underneath the video don't mess around oh boy look what's coming here apparently according to whalechart.org america's first nuclear powered bitcoin mining center to open in pennsylvania Oh, that's all we got right now, but we will keep you up to date on it. And then there's this. This is the XRP ledger we got for you here. Now, well, wait a minute. I don't know where that came from. But here, the XRP ledger amendment goes live today without Ripple's approval. Now, that's what we like to see. Decentralization, ladies and gentlemen. XRP Ledger will see a new amendment go live today, and this is based around the check cash makes trust line. And essentially, the amendment will adjust the checks feature of the XRP Ledger that has been available for over two years now. It's worked similarly to personal paper checks. The sender issues a check for a specified amount, while the recipient must redeem the check to receive the specified amount. Now, the actual movement of the funds does not occur until the check is cashed. So the check may fail to clear depending on the center's current sender's current balance and available liquidity. However, the new change customizes the check cash transaction so that when a check is cashed for an issued token, a trust line is automatically created for the token. This eliminates the step of setting up a trust line before receiving a token via check. So there you have that. And again, that went through 27 out of 34. Boom, just like that. That's decentralization, baby. We love seeing it. Yeah, no nuclear power plant necessary. <laughs> John Deaton says here, People have told me that I'm likely fighting a losing battle. Maybe I am, he says, but what else do we do? We have to fight all of these court battles because clarity through legislation is not coming. Congress, I triple dare you to prove me wrong. Yeah, and I double down on that one. But I stand with John Deaton and say, sometimes you have to pick which hill you're willing to die on. I stand with John Deaton and 76,000 plus XRP holders. If you haven't joined that class action, I don't know what you're waiting for. I check it out and see if it's right for you because I think it is. This is in support to a thread that was going on here and we need to see it. John Deaton shared this right here. I'm going to open this very quickly for you. 
This is literally the framework analysis from the Securities Exchange Commission, okay, for investment contract analysis of digital assets. That's what this is. And this, to be clear, just for clarity here, came out in 2019, modified 2019. So this is the rules from the SEC. Now, what's so disturbing about all of this is I highlight exactly to John Deaton's point here is this. It clearly says in here, the less likely the Howey test is met if these things are found. With respect to a digital asset referred to as a virtual currency, it can immediately be used to make payments in a wide variety of contexts or act as a substitute for real or fiat currency. That's exactly what XRP does and is. You know, you come back to this. This is the framework that they had here, right? And then this is the findings of FinCEN, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network from the Treasury, who said that XRP is a virtual currency. How in the world do we get here, ladies and gentlemen? How do world do we get here? It's just unbelievable, but yet we're here. The Australian government plans to introduce legislation to regulate, regulate crypto sector later this year. We also know that Algorand's been selected to launch a stable coin out of Australia. And then we have the Bank of Spain, which has given approval for the launch of a pilot program involving the issuance and usage of a Europeg stable coin, right? We've also known that now we see Norway plus central bank digital currencies, the Scandinavian nations working on CBDC since 2016, and it is coming quickly. We also know that the UK has said they intend to release a UK or uh, British pound stable coin in the coming weeks. G7 nation, ladies and gentlemen. Bank of America's had a revelation. Digital currencies appear to be inevitable. Welcome to the game, right? I want to remind everybody of this. Remember this? Nick Burefado went to, went to uh, Swell, this most recent Swell. Remember this? Take a listen to what was said here. First thing is, I, I met with Brad Garlinghouse face-to-face, -face and Brad was so confident. He's got an air of confidence about him that's unbelievable. I met Brad first in 2019 back in Singapore, and he's even more confident today than he was back then. He made it clear that they're ready to settle with the SEC as long as they can get clarity on XRP. I asked him if American companies were waiting on the sidelines to jump in the game once clarity happens, and he said, absolutely. And he specifically said Bank of America. Bank of America is a huge partner of Ripple. And he said Bank of America, um, Bank of America stands to gain really big when the settlement happens. And there you have that as a nice reminder, right? So I tell you, you know, things are happening even when we feel that they aren't. Now, I want to come back and address this. Shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf. Shout out to ProCoin News, my sponsor. Give them a follow. Remember when it said Binance reveals that SWIFT Network might have to cut access to crypto? And then we dove into it a little bit and found out that actually it was Signature Bank, right, that was cutting it out and basically saying they weren't able to use SWIFT unless you were sending more than $100,000, which is essentially saying if you're a retail investor, the door is closed. Well, I think we have some information on why the door got closed. Is this the federal home loans bank system carrying out a stealth rescue of the two biggest crypto banks? And are we really watching a too big to fail moment for cryptocurrency? Take a look. These two banks are Signature Bank, which happens to be the very bank that was cited by Binance in this particular release here. Oh, it gets better. Signature and Silvergate Bank, which happens to be owned by, wait for it, Barry Silver, Digital Currency Group, also in trouble. 
The two biggest crypto banks have received billions in loans from the federal home loan banks, a system originally designed to support housing finance and community investment. Hence the reason here that we're seeing this, a stealth rescue. It's a very good article here. Signatures loans are more than double its previous highest sum in several years, while 2022 marked the first year of Silvergate to tap home loan banks. The federal home loan banks are 11 U.S. government-sponsored banks that provide loans to institutions. Founded during the Great Depression, the system has $1.1 trillion in assets and over 6,500 members. It says here, if you come down here, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who has been vocal critic of the crypto industry, has voiced concern regarding the growing relationship between crypto exposed banks and trade fide companies. This is why I've been warning of the dangers of allowing crypto to become intertwined with the banking system. Under no circumstances should taxpayers be left holding the bag for collapses in the crypto industry, a market brimming with fraud, money laundering, and illicit finance. Just as Congress is brimming with a lack of responsibility, due diligence, and hard work. You know, if Congress got off their ass and did this job, she wouldn't have to make that comment. However, Signature Bank tells us that they have to stop using SWIFT unless it's more than $100,000. That, I am speculating, but that probably has a lot to do with this bailout that they're getting through the home loan organization here. And it was probably an agreement that you're going to stop accepting retail money through SWIFT for all of this in order to get this money you need to bail you out. We get more information, we'll let you know about it. But that's exactly what it looks like. Let's turn the table real quick. I got a few minutes left here, and I want to go over this because I covered over the weekend, and Molly Elmore, shout out to her, Val Hill Capital, Jimmy Val Lee, the XRP buyback, the confidential committee. Everybody gets confused. There's a new price out here that's been formulated, and it's 122000 plus per XRP if you add in all the world's total debt and value. Now, With that being said, I'm going to ask you to take the 35,000, 50,000, the 122,000 now formulated price of all the value, all the debt of the world, and set it aside for a second. Because the point of it and the confidential committee and the Federal Reserve buyback proposal is not about a high priced XRP. It's about understanding the difference between a 42 cent XRP, which happens to be the current market value, versus fair market value. And fair market value is the most probable price which a company or an asset would bring in a competitive and open market in a fair sale. And in order to have a fair sale, and trust me, I used to be a real estate appraiser. I know a little something about this. You can't have true fair market value unless both parties on each side of the sale have complete and full disclosure and are not under any duress. And I'm about to show you that you and I, whether you like it or not, do not have full disclosure. So it's impossible for us to truly know what the full scale intended use really is. And that would indicate we certainly don't know the real fair market value. Now, wouldn't it? Let's take a look. So this is the actual post here that got it all kicked off. Shout out to Molly Elmore. She's incredible. Give her a follow. And then this here is the initial complaint from the SEC. And then I'm going to take you right here to just start things off. Those of you who have been with me a minute, you know where I'm going. That's right, line 82. Ripple also undertook to achieve its goal of widespread distribution of XRP, exchanging XRP for non-cash consideration. Now, that right there is telling you that they made deals using XRP. Now, I don't think that that's nefarious. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just showing you that we don't know the details of those deals. Okay? And then we're going to show you this. This is Michelle Bond, formerly of Ripple, and Monica Long at the time, talking exactly about this. 
thing that um, I think sets us apart is that we're really changing the infrastructure for cross-border payments, um, and we're not consumer-facing in any way. So mm -hmm. I think that also sets us mm -hmm. You can hear the condescending tone from Monica Long in that one, can't you? Yeah, why, why I wish these retail investors would just get the hell out of here, right? That's what we're hearing out of, that's what that tone speaks to me. Mm-hmm. We are not consumer facing in any way, which means there are clearly details that they're not made for you and I, and that's okay. Look, you're a retail investor, you're not an institution, and I'm not either. But it means there is a lot of information that you don't know to understand what the fair market value and real intended use of the asset truly is. But we do know this. Listen to this old clip talking to, uh, uh, to the people in this conference here. And listen to what Brad Garlinghouse says in this clip here. Take a listen institutions, you know, Joey and I sat in a meeting not that long ago with, you know, some of the, the largest institutional money in the world trying to get smart about crypto. They owned zero on that day. I don't know if they do today. But as they enter the market, you have fixed supply, increasing demand. You don't have to go to MIT to know what's going to happen. I, right? You have fixed supply, increasing demand, and you don't have to go to MIT to know what's going to happen there. That's kind of where my head is, and that's what, what I'm waiting for. And I know a lot of people here in my voice are waiting for that moment as well. We just want to get clarity on the asset so we can see what a open free market can really do and then find out the NDA's burn off about the non-cash agreements, the pre-allocated option contracts, which are 100% confirmed. Then as retail investors, we can truly understand what the potential for fair market value can be. Then there's this clip here. We've covered this before. And shout out to Linda P. Jones and shout out to Working Money Channel, where I first found this clip and Mr. Hubert as well. This is Gary Gensler's twin brother visiting him when he was teaching at MIT. And he talks about the fact that we are going to see a Phoenix rise from the ashes after all of this that's been happening. Take a listen. I actually think something will happen. It's just will well us all that we hadn't even considered, but it's in the second phase, not in this first phase of hype, disappointment. And I don't think we're anywhere near the disappointment. The disappointment takes years and all of a sudden, they, like the Phoenix from the ashes, it rises up again. And it's once the distributed process is all out there and there's not nodes like a Bitcoin nodes, but nodes of users. It's like it's unbelievable. I mean, I don't think you could say it any better. And when you think about all of these things and what we truly don't have access to, and I'm not blaming anybody. It is just the current state of affairs and it is the way things are. And I understand that. I don't slight Ripple for that. They are not consumer facing. They have been forward about that notion from day one. They have never misrepresented themselves. But is it so hard to believe that we could see some affirmative confirmation and breakout as Edgrad Crypto sites out here above this little window that could eventually take us to a $27 XRP? I don't think so. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I don't think a breakout like that's hard to believe. As long as we have clarity going forward for XRP, I believe we could see a lot of non-disclosure agreements burn off. <laughs> and when they do, it's because they're going to see the real application of this technology, this digital asset put to work in a very real business. Not financial advice or me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.